One of the most ancient and most celebrated events of the Christian year takes place just 12 days after Christmas. It is known as Epiphany, or by the Orthodox as Theophany. It commemorates and celebrates the baptism of Jesus Christ in the Jordan River. And as with many events in the Bible, we can learn a lot more about it through an icon. Baptism is the beginning of the Christian life. It is the first steps on an exciting journey of Christianity. If you want to know more about baptism, if you would like to get baptized, please visit an Orthodox church and talk to a priest about it. There is so much beauty, depth and theology to baptism that we can't fully express it in an online video. So please take that discussion in real life to a priest at a church. The word theophany means a visible manifestation of God. In the Western world, this day and this festival is known as Epiphany, a word that means a great realization. Both Theophany and Epiphany are words that are used to describe two events that are celebrated simultaneously every year on the 6th of January. The first of the two events celebrated on the 6th of January is the coming of the wise men. They have an epiphany of who God is, who Jesus is, and they experience a theophany, a visible manifestation of God in the flesh. The main event of the 6th of January is Christ's baptism in the Jordan River as recorded in the Gospels. This is a festival that the church has been celebrating longer than Christmas, by the way. In the Bible, just before Jesus' earthly ministry begins, he goes to the Jordan River where his cousin John is baptizing people. Jesus comes to John to be baptized. John is surprised and says, why should I baptize you? John knows that this is the Son of God and Jesus says, no, let it be done this way. Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River and then a voice from heaven says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit of God descends like a dove from heaven. And this is a theophany, a visible manifestation of God in Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are present here. It is an epiphany because here, all three members of the Trinity, God in three persons, are seen at work. A hymn of Theophany, known and recognized by Orthodox around the world that has been sung in Orthodox churches every year for centuries, gives us an understanding of what is happening on Theophany. When you, O Lord, were baptized in the Jordan, the worship of the Trinity was made manifest. For the voice of the Father bore witness to you, calling you his beloved Son, and the Spirit in the form of a dove confirmed the truthfulness of his word. O Christ our God, you have revealed yourself. Glory to you. Like all of Orthodox iconography, the Theophany icon expresses some of the truths that can be found in this story and some of the depths and symbolism that we can learn from it. Like all our videos on icons, and we have several on this channel, we can only introduce the icon to you. There is more to discover about it, and please visit an Orthodox church to do so. First, we see Christ in the river. All of the icon leads to him in the middle. The Jordan River running through the center of the icon divides the dry land. Spanning this divide and the bridge between the two sides is Jesus Christ. The two sides represent earth and heaven. On one side, representing earth and humanity, is John the Baptist, a human being. On the other side, in the area representing heaven, are angels. Jesus is the bridge between earth and heaven. He brings earth and heaven together. The angels are waiting to clothe Jesus in heavenly garments. In older icons, Jesus is not dressed at all. In many icons, he wears a loincloth as a symbol of modesty. But there is an element here of him being unclothed because Jesus is the new Adam. Whereas Adam, unclothed in the Garden of Eden, sinned and left God, Jesus, as the perfect Adam, does what Adam couldn't. He reunites man with God, earth with heaven. Jesus succeeds at being the perfect human being. John the Baptist is in this icon always showing deference to Christ. He is either bowing to him or looking up at the descent of the Holy Spirit. John is the last of the Old Testament prophets. He is here introducing all of us and all of creation to Christ, to the New Testament. While in the Western world John is often known as John the Baptist, in the Eastern Orthodox world we tend to call him John the Forerunner. A forerunner is someone who comes before a king to announce his coming, and that is the calling of John. And that is what he is doing here in the icon. He is showing us the Holy Trinity. And he is showing us God in human flesh, Jesus Christ. Near John on the riverbank is a tree with an axe in it. This is showing his words that even now an axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 
this is a prophecy for the end times, but it is also a reminder to us that our baptism is not to be allowed to go to spiritual laziness, but that our baptism is for us to bear spiritual fruit. In the river, there are a couple of odd characters riding fish and fleeing in terror from Jesus. These characters are tiny, insignificant, they're often painted the same color as the river so that you almost lose them in there, and yet there is something almost scary about them. They are two little characters normally, riding sea monsters. One of them, normally a man, represents the Jordan River. The Jordan River has, by this point in biblical history, seen a lot of amazing events all throughout the Old Testament, but the Jordan River has never seen anything like this. God incarnate has entered the water, and the Jordan River flees. The second figure on a sea monster, normally a woman, is a representative of the oceans of the world, a representation of chaos. Chaos flees from the face of Christ. So as Christ enters the water, chaos runs for its life. They're also a representation of the old pagan gods running from the face of Christ, and thus they are so insignificant in the icon. They are also showing forth several prophecies of theophany that appear in the Psalms. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back. You established the sea by your might, you broke the heads of the dragons in the water. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid, the abysses were troubled. Finally, while Christ is in the water, he is not within the water. The water does not come up to his waist. The water flows behind Jesus. We always see him from head to toe. And that is because even though Jesus Christ is being baptized into the Jordan River, rather than Christ being immersed into creation, all of creation is being immersed into Christ. He has come to renew everything. There is so much more that can be said about theophany, about baptism, about the story of the Jordan River, and about this icon, but we can't really fit it all in here. The Feast of Theophany is one of the grandest and most exciting festivals of the entire Christian year and has been celebrated by millions of fellow believers all throughout history since the days of the early church. There are many wonderful traditions and festivities around the world on this day and in the weeks that follow Theophany on the 6th of January. Most Orthodox Christians will have their houses blessed for the coming year. Theophany is known in the church as the Festival of Lights. It is a day in which we are illuminated with truth. The events depicted in the Theophany icon aren't just events that happened centuries and centuries ago that we remember, they are a present reality. It is a reality to which we are invited to participate through baptism and a life in Christ in his holy church. That is the first episode we're releasing in the year 2024. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is a short moment to remind you that patristics really could do with your help in continuing to make these videos. So if you could go to our Ko-Fi page, because the price of a single cup of tea per month really helps us cover the costs that come about from making this show. So thank you very much to those who have helped so far. We love you. So today's tea is a Malaysian inspired tea containing pure black tea, roasted rice, coconut and pandan and I've really genuinely enjoyed it.